my journey with Dr. Miles Monroe. The story begins many, many years ago, and our connection is so unlikely. Uh, it's almost like you had to create a movie to, to make this connection because it was un, un, unforeseen. It was kind of a, a strange occurrence, as you would say. But it all began uh, when I was a teenager here in the Bahamas. My sisters actually were involved in ministry with Miles Monroe, and they used to talk about him. So my sister, Marilyn, she, they, her and, and Dr. Monroe were good friends. They were ministry partners together. And sometimes at home, you know, her and my other sister, Linnell, they would talk to me about this guy. But at that time, they didn't call him Miles Monroe. They called him Peter. And I remember, I remember them talking about this guy, and um, I wasn't really paying attention. I just kind of heard about it, you know, heard that he was doing some things in Nassau. But of course, at that time, I was on the streets. I was on a different track altogether. Uh, I had no interest in, you know, the gospel situation and what was happening with the church. I didn't go to church, didn't go near a church. Church wasn't something on my radar. And so that's how it all began, with, with just with me hearing about him. What's interesting is um, he and I didn't connect, but I ended up crossing paths in a parallel way. So for example, uh, he lived in Baintown and I used to be hang out in Baintown. So I used to go through the neighborhoods of Baintown. I had friends in Baintown. Baintown, if you don't understand what Baintown is, Baintown is the hood. It's the deep hood. It's the ghetto. And uh, at that time, you know, I was somebody who frequented many ghettos. I was a ghetto child at that time. I wasn't born in the ghetto, but unfortunately the ghetto was born in me. So I spent a lot of my time in the ghetto in Baintown. And then there was another area close by that I used to um, hang out with. In fact, it was really close to where he lived and we used to call it Harlem, McQuay Street in Nassau. So he was doing his thing and I was moving around in the same community, but we didn't connect. Uh, a few years later, I heard about, uh, my sisters still talked about him, I heard about him doing these events in school. So his ministry, he had a band, he had a, a, a Christian rock band or Christian R&B band. And they went around to schools and parks and big events and they were just sharing the gospel. The group was called the Visionaires. And at that time, I remember they had this big um, advertisement that the Visionaires was coming to my school school I went to was called a government high school and the government high school was right across from Bain Town. And so, you know, I, I was there and I heard about him coming to the school and they actually made all of the students come into assembly. So we had a big auditorium and all the students had to come in to listen to Miles Monroe. But of course, at that time, uh, like I said, you know, I wasn't interested in any gospel stuff. So I got a few of my boys together and I said, hey man, you know, they have this Christian stuff coming to the campus, uh, let's go by the bar room. So when they had this um, concert or, or ministry time going on, we went by the bar room to shoot pool. And then when it was over, you know, what was amazing is that a lot of the young people in the school in government high school had gotten saved and they started a Christian student movement. But again, it wasn't my thing. So, you know, I didn't pay attention to it. So fast forward a little bit. Um, I didn't have much connections with him after that. I mean, we had never met. I still had never seen him. I heard about him, but I, I couldn't tell you what he looked like. I didn't see him. I, you know, I didn't pay attention. And then um, fast forward a few years. I went to college and while I was in college, again, I was doing my thing. I didn't go to church. I didn't have any time for God. Uh, you know, I didn't, I wasn't really paying attention. 
But while in college, I got in trouble, and I got in really, really big trouble. You know, a friend of mine had been locked up by the police, and uh, they were accusing us of doing some things, which in fact we did. I won't specify what those things are, but let's say we were facing several years in prison. And at that time, they had locked up my friend, and they were looking for me. So when they, were, when they started to look for me, you know, I started to panic a little bit because, you know, I was like, man, I don't want to go to jail in the U.S. And so uh, I started to, I was afraid, so I started to pray. And I was like, God, you know, get me out of the situation. If you get your boy out of the situation, you know, I'm going to do better. And then I remembered this song that the visionaries used to sing. And again, I didn't know Miles Monroe wrote this song or anything. I just, I just remembered it. And I said, man, let me call my mother because I remember the song. The song was called Brand New World. We don't like the way the world is turning. Something inside us is always yearning, yearning for a brand new world. People everywhere are so confused. People don't know what, just what to do. Everybody wants a brand new world. But if you want a brand new world, you got to have a brand new people. If you want a brand new people, you got to have a brand new life. If you want a brand new life, you got to have a brand new spirit. And if you want a brand new spirit, you got to come to Jesus Christ. So the words in this song, I had heard it before. And uh, I, of course, I still wasn't going to church or anything, but I was hiding. <laughs> I was in hiding. You know, they were looking for me. And I thought about it and I said, man, you know, what I need right now is a brand new world. The song just intrigued me. So I actually called back home to the Bahamas and I asked my mother to send me the song. So she sent me the song. And uh, sometimes on Sunday morning, you know, I might be smoking a joint or doing whatever. I'll sit down and listen to the song. And that was my kind of my way of saying, you know, God, I need help. But I needed help at the time because I didn't want to you know, go to jail. That was basically it. And so I listened to the song and I didn't really think any more of it. Eventually everything got sorted out. You know, me and my friend, we were, we got off. We didn't get into any, we didn't have to do any time or anything. And um, I remember my sister again, who was his friend, she called me and she said, um, she said, Dave, why don't you consider coming to R. Roberts University? She knew that I was getting in trouble from time to time. And she said, man, this is a different environment. And then I was a basketball player. And she said, they have a great basketball team. She started sending me articles and information. And so she sent me this information. And so I was intrigued by the basketball team and, and the fact that you know it was a different environment. And so I actually applied because I wanted to get away. I wanted to get away from trouble. Everywhere I went, it seemed like trouble seemed to follow me or I followed trouble. I don't know which one. So I decided, uh, let me apply. So I applied and um, I actually got accepted. I mean, it was actually amazing how I got accepted. Um, you know, that's a story in itself because um, I basically had to lie on every line of the application in order to get accepted. But sometimes, you know, they say God works in mysterious ways. And my mother found a, a, a pastor who was my pastor when I was a little boy. And he did a pastor's reference for me. He remembered me as a good little boy. And so that's what was submitted to ORU. So I got in. But when I got there, I wasn't a Christian. Um, I was still a street guy. And, um, you know, so I started hanging around my brother-in-law and um, he was a preacher and he was also a basketball player. So we hung together and we went, you know, around campus and we went to all of the parks and we went on the, on the ghettos of, the, of, the, of Tulsa, on the north side of Tulsa to play ball. And, um, you know, we just hung out and eventually I got saved. So I actually gave my life to the Lord. And one day while I was on campus, I was just rock, walking across the campus and this guy stopped me, you know, a little short guy stopped me. And um, I didn't even know that he was at ORU until my sister told me because my sister eventually told me that she was the one who invited him to ORU. So I met him on the campus and he stopped me and he said, you Marlon's brother? I said, yeah. 
he said, man, um, I want you to come and hear me speak. And he was speaking at a special chapel service. So he came and got me. And, uh, you know, we talked for a little bit. And then I heard him speak. And I was blown away. You know, I was like, man, this, 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 is, a, this is a little wise dude. And so we developed a relationship. He asked me to come over to the chapel where he was working in the chaplain's office, in the mission, mission's office. And we sat down in the mission's office and we started talking and he was asking me about my life and my plans, my future, what was going on. And it was the beginning of a mentoring relationship. So after I told him what was happening in my life, he made some recommendations to me. He said, Dave, you know, if you want to grow spiritually, what you should do is to come to communion every day, come to communion services every day. And so I actually took him up on it, started going to communion, and I started to grow spiritually. Of course, at that time, I was still very raw. I had gotten saved, but I wasn't fully converted. So I still had a lot of street ways in me. And during that time, I almost got thrown out of school twice. You know, I had uh, threatened a guy with a big rock. Uh, and then, you know, I did some other stuff that I almost got thrown out of school. And, uh, but we, our relationship continued, you know, uh, we used to talk from time to time. We didn't hang out in the same social cir uh, circles because I wasn't very, I, you know, I wasn't, I didn't come from a Christian background. You know, my mother was a Christian. I grew up in church to a certain extent, but I wasn't comfortable around church guys. So ORU was a really strange place to me and it felt uncomfortable. But, you know, I was growing spiritually and he was a mentor. And so we used to talk, but we didn't hang out socially. Um, but what ended up happening is that, you know, he would give me advice. So sometimes if, if I needed counsel on different things, he would give me counsel. If I needed a ride, uh, you know, if I, if I had to take a girl somewhere, he would lend me his car. And so we had this big brother, little brother relationship and it was very productive because he helped to keep me on the straight and narrow. Uh, 